Assalamu alaikum. This is Amanullah. You are watching my YouTube channel, Dr. Aman Video. Today we are going to discuss about the mode of transmission of infectious diseases. Mode of transmission of infectious diseases refer to the way through which infectious agent transmitted from reservoir to the susceptible host. Now, what do we mean by reservoir and what do we mean by the susceptible host? Reservoir is any natural habitat where infectious agent or pathogen can live, grow and can multiply. It is known as reservoir. Reservoir can be a human being, it can be animal or it can be any environmental source like soil or water. Now, what do you mean by a susceptible host? Susceptible host is any person who is at risk of getting infected by the infectious agent or pathogen. There are different schemes used for the understanding of mode of transmission of infectious agent. Here we will use this scheme in which the mode of transmission or the way of transmitting of infectious agent from reservoir to new uh, to susceptible host can be divided into direct and indirect mode of transmission. So first of all come to the direct mode of transmission. Direct mode of transmission can be divided into three categories. First of all direct physical contact. It means that the transmission of infectious agent from the reservoir to the susceptible host through direct physical contact. So, direct physical contact as the word indicate when a susceptible host come in contact, come in direct physical contact with the reservoir. But depend that what is the reservoir or which is the reservoir. For example, if the reservoir is a human reservoir, so in this case the susceptible host can come in physical contact by physical contact, by hugging or by handshake or by any other mean or it can come in physical contact through sexual intercourse. So in this case there are certain infectious diseases which are transmitted from one human reservoir to a susceptible host like through sexual intercourse, hepatitis B can be transferred, hepatitis C can be transferred, HIV can be transferred, syphilis can be transferred and there is a long list of sexually transmitted diseases. Or in case of skin infection, there are certain skin infection which can be transmitted from human to a new susceptible host through physical contact. Now, if the reservoir host is animal, so in that case, the susceptible host come in contact with animal reservoir or with the product of the animal reservoir which contain infectious agent. In this way, infectious agent can transmit it from animal reservoir to the susceptible host. For example, Brosilla abortus is a bacteria which is transmitted from animal reservoir to the susceptible host when susceptible host come in physical contact with the infectious animal reservoir. Now, if the reservoir is environmental, like for example, certain infectious agent live in the soil as a reservoir. So when the susceptible host come in contact with the soil, so these infectious agent can transfer from soil to the susceptible host. For example, the spore of the Clostidium tetanae present in the soil can transmit to the susceptible host when susceptible host come in contact to these uh, spores of Clostidium tetanae present in the soil and they can cause tetanus. Or another example is the larvae of the hookworms which are present in the moist soil so they transfer to the susceptible host when, sus when susceptible host come in contact with these larvae present in the moist soil so these are the example of the direct physical contact depend on the nature of the reservoir now the second mood of direct transmission of infectious agent from reservoir to the susceptible host is the perinatal or transplacental. Perinatal transmission is the transmission of infectious agent from mother to her baby during pregnancy through placenta or during delivery 
from delivery from the delivery track to the her fetus or to the her baby or after delivery during lactation through breast milk so there are certain infectious agent which can transmit it from mother to her baby through these ways for example Taxoplasma gondii is a parasite which can trans which can transmit from mother to her fetus during placenta during pregnancy or you can see the example of Streptococcus eglexiae which is present in the vaginal tract of some female so it can transfer during delivery and it can cause meningitis in the infant or you can see that HIV virus or there are many other infectious agent which can transmit it in breast milk during lactation so it is also the direct mode of transmission of infectious agent from reservoir to the susceptible host the third form of direct transmission is direct droplet spread what are droplet or respiratory droplet Respiratory droplets are the aerosols which are produced with sneezing, coughing or even talking. So these aerosols are large in size, usually larger than 5 micrometer in size and they, are, and they travels only for 2 to 3 feet. So there are some respiratory infectious pathogen which can be transmitted from reservoir to the susceptible host through the respiratory droplet. It is divided under the direct mode of transmission because respiratory droplet transmit infectious agent only when they are directly transferred from reservoir to the susceptible host before falling into the ground. Once they fall onto the ground, then they are not able to transmit these infectious agent. Therefore, the transmission through respiratory droplet is the direct transmission or you can say is the direct mode of transmission of infectious agent from reservoir to the susceptible host. Now we will discuss the indi now, indirect transmission. Indirect transmission of infectious agent from reservoir to what? Susceptible host. Indirect transmission can be divided into two different into three different ways. Number one is indirect transmission through vector, indirect transmission through vehicle, and indirect transmission through airborne nuclei. Come to the indirect transmission through vector. Vector is a journal term used for living organism which has the ability to transfer infectious agent from reservoir to the susceptible host. It includes mosquitoes, fleas, ticks and many more. The vector trans the vector borne transmission can be biological or mechanical. Now what do we mean by biological and mechanical? Vector bone transmission is biological transmission when the vector when the vector provide a space for multiplication or maturation to the infectious agent and then this vector transfer the infectious agent to the susceptible host this type of transmission is known as biological transmission for example in case of plasmodium malarial parasite so malarial parasites perform several steps of his, its life cycle into the gut of the mosquito then that mosquito transfer the plasmodium parasite to the susceptible host. So in that case the vector is biological vector because it provide a place for the maturation or any other process. While in case of mechanical transmission, mechanical transmission is a transmission through vector. In that case, vector did not provide any space for multiplication or maturation. Rather than vector only transfer infectious agent from reservoir to the susceptible host. For example, in case of shigellosis, shigella dysentery, the causative agent, a bacterium, Shigella dysentery, is carried by the leg or appendages of the fleas from the stool of an infected person to the susceptible host. So in this case, only fleas act as a mechanical carrier for the Shigella, 
from reservoir to the susceptible host. So this type of transmission is known as mechanical transmission through vector. Now come to the second way of indirect transmission is transmission of infectious agent through vehicle. Vehicle is any object which has ability to transfer infectious agent from reservoir to the susceptible host indirectly for example food and water. Food and water are two important vehicle which usually transfer infectious agent from reservoir to the susceptible host. For example, the infectious agent of cholera, Vibrio cholera or Shigella or Salmonella or there is a large list of water and foodborne diseases. So in that case, water or food act as a vehicle for transferring infectious agent from reservoir to the susceptible host like amoebic dysentery, like giardiasis in case of giardia lamblia and there are many more infectious agents. The second vehicle which is very important is the blood or blood product. Blood and blood product can also carry or transmit infectious agent from reservoir to the susceptible host like hepatitis B virus, hepatitis C virus, HIV, syphilis and there are many other infectious agent which can be transmitted from reservoir to the susceptible host through blood or blood product. Even blood, even organ for transplant also act is a vehicle for the transmission of infectious agent from reservoir to the susceptible host. Fomites are the non-living object which can carry infectious agent from reservoir to the susceptible host like toys, like hand handkerchief, like door knob, mobile phone, surgical instrument which are used for different surgeries, dental, journal surgeries, orthopedic surgeries and many more surgeries. So these all comes under the heading of fomites and they can transfer infectious agent from reservoir to the susceptible host and this type of transmission come under the indirect mode of transmission. Finally, airborne transmission or transmission through airborne nuclei is a type of indirect transmission. Airborne nuclei are again the aerosols which are produced through sneezing, coughing or talking but they are very small in size, usually less than 5 micron and they can suspend in the air for a long time and they can travel a long distance. So there are some respiratory pathogen which can transfer through these airborne nuclei. They, it is divided, it comes under the heading of indirect transmission because these airborne transmission, yeah, these airborne nuclei suspend in the air after removing the reservoir. Like for example, there is a patient of tuberculosis, he cough or sneeze and he produce tubercul bacilli into the nuclei and these nuclei suspend in the ear and, it, and this person, this infected person goes away and a second person comes and he or she inhale these tubercle bacilli present in the nuclei. So therefore it is the indirect transmission because nuclei does not directly transfer from infected person to the susceptible host. They suspend into the beside tuberculosis. Measles is the another example of airborne disease that measles virus can transfer through airborne nuclei and it is the indirect transmission of infectious agent from reservoir to the susceptible host. It was all about the mode of transmission of infectious agent from reservoir to the, new, to the susceptible host. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you found it beneficial then of course I would request you to please subscribe my YouTube channel Dr. Aman video and try to hit bell icon in order to get notification for my upcoming video. Thank you so much for watching my YouTube channel Free Amanillah.